to the next question. Which of the following definition of ARDS is followed currently? Options are Brickton criteria, Berlin criteria and Rome 3 or American College of Chest Physician criteria. So now this beyond doubt we know, right? We are following what is known as Berlin criteria, right? We are following Berlin criteria for diagnosis of ARDS. Now, what are we doing in Berlin criteria for the diagnosis of ARDS? There are few important things. Berlin criteria talks about how we diagnose ARDS and how we try to rule out closely related differentials in a simplistic manner, right? So, for that, we have to understand in the Berlin criteria, in a patient who presents with respiratory symptoms, ARDS is diagnosed if patient meets the following criteria. What are the following criteria? Criteria number one, timing, right? This is very, very important. Now, timing is in the sense if say for example patient has developed sepsis and then this sepsis had led to development of ARDS or patient had a, a massive road traffic accident there was an RTA and this RTA there was crushing of tissues patient had developed rhabdomyolysis and as a complication of that he has developed ARDS so there should be a temporal relation between this event and patient developing respiratory symptoms and this temporal uh, relation is defined by the time less than seven days so if the inciting event and the respiratory symptoms are spaced out by more than seven days probably you cannot consider ARDS in that case for example you hospitalize a patient with uh, urinary tract infection right and patient develops sepsis and from the time of patient developing sepsis 10-15 days down the line when he is making a substantial recovery from sepsis if he develops respiratory symptoms probably we are dealing with a case of hospital acquired pneumonia rather than ARDS right so there is there is an importance given to the temporal relation right so inciting event whatever it is to the development of respiratory symptoms the time limit should be under seven days that is the first point under berlin criteria right that is important second thing these patients who developed respiratory symptom within seven days of an inciting event should have bilateral chest infiltrate so on chest imaging whether you're doing an x-ray or ct that is secondary X-ray is more than adequate most cases and in reality practically we have started using ultrasound also. On chest imaging there should be bilateral infiltrates right we know what kind of infiltrates we are talking about we are talking about bilateral alveolar infiltrates these infiltrates should not be explainable by presence of consolidation or presence of nodules or presence of pleural effusion right anyway most of us do not get confused at this point of time only differential di diagnosis for this kind of X-ray picture for us would be the pulmonary edema caused by cardiogenic causes right. So, just imaging bilateral infiltrate. So, bilateralism is very important, right? You cannot consider diagnosis of ARDS when there are unilateral infiltrates, okay? Then third point is, as I've already told you, I would be strongly thinking of cardiogenic cause for pulmonary edema whenever I see such a picture. I have to rule that out before I call it as a case of ARDS. So, for that, previous guidelines used to heavily rely on PCWP. So, that means you have to do a right heart catheterization and only then you will be able to say with confidence whether you are dealing with a case of ARDS or a cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So, here we have to rule out left heart failure as a cause by looking at 2D echo. So, emphasis is on echo rather than PCWP. So, we are not looking at PCWP for the diagnosis of ARDS in the Berlin criteria. So, the invasive procedures are done away with, right? So, 2D echo normal, then you can say cardiac function is fair enough, there is no left heart failure. Then we go to the next criteria. What is the next criteria? We have to prove that this patient has hypoxia, right? Someone who had an inciting event, developed the respiratory, uh, respiratory symptoms, chest x-ray showed that there are bilateral infiltrates, 2D echo shows that there is no cardiac dysfunction. Then we have to prove that this patient has significant hypoxia to call it as ARDS. If there is no significant hypoxia, okay, at least as of now it is not ARDS, right? So, how do we define this hypoxia? We are looking at PaO2 by FiO2 ratio, PaO2 by FiO2 ratio, right? So, PaO2 by FiO2 ratio, if it is less than 300, then it qualifies to be called as ARDS and we can further classify it. We can further classify it to mild, moderate, severe. So, if it is 300 to 200, it is called as mild. So, in the previous definitions, this patient would have turned term, would have been classified as acute lung injury right so whatever used to be called as ali will now be called as mild ards according to the berlin criteria right? 300 to 200 now further going down 200 to 100 is when you call it as moderate and when it is less than 100 you call it as severe right so this is the berlin criteria so going back to the question now let us see what makes sense okay the question is directed which of the following definition of ards is followed currently yes we are following the berlin criteria okay now let's go to the question number 9 
which of the following is not required for diagnosis of ARDS using Berlin criteria. Now it makes quite sense. We need imaging. Yes, definitely we need imaging. Chest X-ray suffices most cases. And I prefer to use ultrasound because uh, I, I love to see those beautiful B lines. Okay. 2D echocardiography. Yes, it is required to rule out the cardiac dysfunction. Pulmonary, I mean, partial pressure of art, uh, oxygen in the blood, artery, arterial blood. Yes, it is required. PCWP is something that is not required, right? So, confidently, I can pick options 3 as option C as wrong answer. Clear? Mm -hmm.